New York uh, and Miami are acknowledged by the Hurricane Center as the most dangerous places for a hurricane to make landfall. New York, because of its very unique topographic, geologic, oceanographic, demographic factors that are completely different, assigns it probably the worst place a hurricane can make landfall. Because a hurricane is a counterclockwise rotating system of vortex winds, and New Jersey and New York make a right angle. And when that system comes into that right angle, it pushes all of the coastal waters into a right angle. And you can't push water into a right angle without it rising to abnormal heights. And the slosh model, which the Hurricane Center uses to predict the water height raise, predicts that in a Category 3 storm, which people in the South hardly think of, uh, the, uh, the water levels at the Statue of Liberty will be 22 feet. And in Jamaica Bay, which is the most dangerous place in America to be in a hurricane, 24. And the new slosh model, which I've just examined, raises that to 28 feet. That exceeds a Category 5 by several feet in the Gulf Coast. So because of that right angle, New York is uh, subject to unbelievable flooding. And that's not theoretical because I've looked back at what happened in 1893 and 1821 and New York. Plus, uh, New York is the only place in the world where you get two surges. Aren't we lucky? When the hurricane moves in, it uh, pushes water along the South Shore, right? And three hours later, it, well, it's passing over Long Island Sound. So in Long Island Sound, the oceanography is different, and it creates what we call an edge wave. And the edge wave takes a two and a half to three hours to move through the sound, and the sound narrows. And as the water narrows, the water height goes up. So the, the, the dangerous situation is uh, three hours after the South Shore is destroyed, the western end of Long Island Sound, Westchester, City Island, Astoria, the East River, the power plants all go under. And that's what happened in 1938. The Long Island Sound surge came in at 7 o'clock, hours after the, hur the hurricane was in northern New Hampshire. The power plants on the East River were knocked out by the flooding, and all of Manhattan above 59th Street was plunged into darkness and the subways came to a standstill. In 1938, the hurricane was 70 miles away and we were on the weak left side. And I asked my uncle, who lived on Beach 118th Street and lived to the age of 102, and I said to him, what was it like here on Rockaway in 1938? He says, we were on the second floor, scared for our life, watching fishing boats from Sheepshead Bay coming down 118th Street into the ocean. The Rockaway Peninsula was underwater, because on the left side of the hurricane, strong winds blow offshore. We've worked hard to get an evacuation plan, which has now been published this year for the first time. We have evacuation centers, and they're unique in that you can take your pets to them, I believe, probably the only ones in the country, very well thought out. However, we're dealing with New Yorkers. And as they say all around the country, you can always tell a New Yorker, but you can't tell them very much. So will they cooperate? and get in their cars and drive to Aqueduct Racetrack and wait for a bus to go to an evacuation center? As a lifelong New Yorker, I have serious doubts. But if they follow the plan, it'll work. But look what we're dealing with. We're dealing with millions of people. When we first started to uh, talk about evacuation, they were talking about total evacuation. And I just said, you're insane. You can't get out of Long Island on a weekend in the summertime on a Friday afternoon. Imagine if you have a hurricane in your rear view mirror. I said, let's think about evacuating the 30% of the population that's at multiple risk. And that is everyone that lives below 30 feet in altitude. Because New York is blessed with topography. Think about this. When you start walking toward New York from Mexico, the first time you see a hill at the shoreline is Staten Island. All we have to do is move people in two or three miles. South Carolina, you've got to move them 70 miles to get them into the hills. So we move the east sides and the west sides of Manhattan into the center. We move the north and south shores of Queens and Brooklyn into the Forest Hills, Ridgewood, Masspeth area, which is on the high glacial moraine. So that's the plan now.